Hello, my name is Sahil Malik. I'm a trainer and consultant and I love Angular. I deliver trainings on Angular regularly and you can find my email address right here. Here's another video making yet another Angular concept easy and simple to understand. As always, I look forward to your feedback. Thank you for watching. Now, in a previous video, I just talked about building the world's simplest Angular application using System.js. Now, that was all good, but let's also see how we can write literally the same application using Webpack. Now, just a quick intro of what I saw in system.js here. There was an index.html that was referencing these polyfills. And then there was, uh, we were referencing this file called systemjs.config.js. It had a bunch of hints of system.js to basically tell it where to load which file from where. And then the package.json had got these scripts. They were using light server, TypeScript compiler, running them concurrently. You can see the details of this in the previous video. The application itself was quite simple, basic bootstrapping. And then uh, the app module had just one component. And then one component was doing some, you know, data binding. It's a very, very simple application. Again, you can see how this application was built in a, in a separate video I have on YouTube. Just search for, uh, you know, basic Angular app with system.js. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this folder and so this is called Angular JS system J, Angular system JS. So I'm going to go ahead and create a directory called Angular Webpack. And let's go into Angular Web CD Angular Webpack. And I'm going to say npm init. And it'll go ahead and write uh, package.json for me. And I'm going to go ahead and open this folder in code. And let's go ahead and start modifying it. So the first bit of modifications, again, the application is identical to before. The only difference is the plumbing. So the first changes I need to make are in package.json. And basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, uh, you know, include the same Angular dependencies that I had before. No need for system.js anymore. So that's the only difference. And then I am referencing, you know, these same types, etc. but I'm also referencing Webpack and Webpack related stuff like the loader, etc. You know, that's what I'm referencing here. And then I have some commands, uh, TypeScript, TypeScript watch. That's basically to make sure that, you know, the project compiles before you start it. And then I'm using this thing called Webpack dev server, which is another node package reference down here. And I'm pointing it to a Webpack config.js. So let's go ahead and write that up. So I'm going to say new file webpack config.js and in this file basically i'm saying that go ahead and bundle you know use a typescript loader for typescript files html and css so that's what we are bundling here and basically let's come back here and then there's a bundle command uh and then you know just some other hints like colors watch so basically when it writes stuff out it'll show neat colors we're going to use port 4200 so on so forth but the interesting thing here is that we're pointing it to a file called content-based source. So that's where we want to render stuff out of. So I have package.json. I have webpackconfig.js. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder called source. And that is where my application will go. But before we start putting things in here in the source folder, not file, so new folder called source, we're gonna put some files in there in a second. But remember that at the very top here, I also need to go ahead and put a tsconfig.json just like before. And this is basically hints to the TypeScript compiler. You want to understand the details of what's going on in here. Watch my previous video on system.js and Angular. Basically, it's the same details. So I'm going to skip over that. And let's go to the source folder. And here, let's go ahead and start building my application. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called app. And here I'm going to go ahead and create a folder or a file called index.html. Now, uh, here I'm going to start copying stuff from my previous project, which was the system.js project. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to go dot dot angular system.js and let's go ahead and open it here. 
I'm gonna open this side by side here. Resolution's a little low, pardon me for that, but we'll, we'll do our best. So let's go to index.html first. And uh, let's look for the index.html here, and I'm gonna copy the whole thing, and I'm gonna put it here. Obviously, this is not correct. So let's go ahead and modify it. So what I want to be able to do here is uh, we want to, you know, all this is fine. Styles are really not using it, so let's get rid of that. This is all fine. We don't need to explicitly reference all these polyfills anymore because Webpack is going to bundle them for us. Let's get rid of them. We don't need this either because we're not using system.js, so let's get rid of that. And we don't need this either because we're not using system.js. That's not how we're going to bootstrap the application, so let's get rid of that too. But we need some JavaScript here. That's basically where my application will be. And my webpack config.js says that there'll be a file called slash src slash dist slash bundle.js. So I'm gonna go ahead and reference that file over here, right? So basically my project is gonna get transpiled and bundled into this file here. And you'll see that when I run this in dev mode, it's all in memory, it doesn't really write a file. But if I was to run the bundle command in package.json here, that's where the file will go. So okay, all that is left now is for me to write the actual application. So that is also quite simple. I'm gonna go ahead and, let's just go ahead and open this in uh, Explorer. And this is my old application and I'm gonna sort by type and I'm gonna steal the TypeScript files. It's the world's simplest application, literally like a hello world application. I'm going to go ahead and drop these into the app folder. Yeah, like that. And uh, let's see now. So index.html main ts, and if you look at webpack config.js, we're already pointing it to a file in source app main. And main over here, let's close the system.js, we're done stealing from that. So here we are referencing, basically we're bootstrapping the app module. From the app module, we are bootstrapping app component, okay? And then from there we are rendering the app component in which I have a template with some very simple interpolation, double mustache syntax, one-way data binding going on. And that's my simple Angular app using Webpack now. And that's all I need to do. Let's go ahead and go back to the Webpack folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and run npm install. And while it is running npm install, let's quickly examine package.json. You see here that the start command is well run next, and it is going to use webpack dev server. It is going to point me to webpack config.js, which has all the information necessary to basically create a bundle here. But when I run this in dev mode, actually it doesn't write the file, it's all in memory. We'll see that in a second. Let's give it a second, wait for npm install to finish. And once this finishes, we say npm start. And it is gonna go ahead and compile, bundle. And actually this will not launch the browser on its own. So you can by dash dash open, but you know, we'll worry about that some other day. And I'm gonna visit actually localhost 4200. And it bumps, what's going on? Go to console and it can't file that and that's fine. Oh yeah, so see what's happening here and this is important. So what's happening here is that reflect metadata in zone.js is required to run this application. Now when we were using system.js, this was not such a problem because we were referencing zone.js and you know, reflect metadata explicitly. Uh, we're not doing that here anymore. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to basically create two import statements here. You know, we need to sort of tell this uh, uh, Webpack, we need to tell Webpack that, you know, these two files also need to be bundled with our application. So in our main TS, I'm gonna go ahead and include them. And I come here and it's automatically detects changes. It is loading the application again and it runs just like before. Debugging is slightly different. In order to debug, you look for the webpack node, go to dot, open here, 
and then let's look for app component just like before on line 23 I'm gonna go ahead and set a breakpoint here refresh and it hits that breakpoint life is good right so debugging works now my application is running with webpack and now I've added one facility that I can bundle the application in order to ship it so that's nice Again, however, is this a complete Webpack template? Not really. It doesn't package images. It doesn't pack, uh, you know, it doesn't create multiple modules, multiple JavaScript files for lazy loading. It doesn't understand tests. It doesn't understand SAS. And we could keep enhancing this Webpack based template. That's one way of doing things. Or we could just piggyback on somebody else's shoulders. And that somebody else is Angular CLI. And I'll talk about that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.